Hello and welcome. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of being joined by my colleague, Dr. Fritz Gallet. Fritz is a clinical psychologist, and he's done a lot of work with Loeb Leadership with respect to facilitating diversity, equity, and inclusion dialogue uh, with organizations, especially companies and firms that don't have a history of addressing this issue. How, how are you, Fritz? Uh, I'm hanging on. It's, a, it's some interesting times, but I'm, I'm holding up and hanging on. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining me today. And there's, there are so many topics I would like to speak with you. But first, let's, let's talk about the diversity and inclusion work that you're doing, because it's, it's been so impactful. And if you can just describe you know, what your method is, um, what you're seeing, and, and what has surprised you and what hasn't. Well, I've been given the opportunity to get into organizations and companies and talk with employees, individuals that are affected by everything that's happening. And as you can imagine, uh, imagine uh, people are suffering. Uh, people are having um, the range of all the possible reactions you could be having to what's going on. And I've had the opportunity to create safe space discussions for them to talk these things through. Um, and that's one of the things that I offer. I offer um, safe space focus groups that kind of give people an opportunity to express themselves and talk about things. And I also give them some tools. I teach them how you have um, a dialogue that is um, respectful and mutual and um, one in which there's a fair exchange of ideas and we're able to come out with some level of consensus and if we can't get a total consensus at least understanding of the other point of the person's feelings and thoughts uh, I, I was recently in in a group coaching session where there was discussion about all the stress that people are experiencing in their lives and mm -hmm. not just with respect to civil unrest and and social justice and diversity and inclusion um, but with with COVID-19, with remote working, with isolation, hurricanes, wildfires, uh, there, there are just so many things coming one at a time that people are really being tested and, and their ability to cope. Um, what are your thoughts on, on what someone should be mindful of when, when they're feeling like they're, they're on the edge? Well, they, they should be uh, watching out for the amount of things that are coming at them and what can they do to kind of shut some of those doors off. You know, 20, 30 years ago when you and I would have wanted to take a break, take a walk, whatever it was, we would just walk away. We would take a break. We'd take a walk. But nowadays we take our cell phones with us. 20, 30 years ago, um, if we wanted to hear the news, we had to sit down and watch it. Now it's popping into our phone, chiming, or on our computers all the time. So, one, there's a steady flow of a lot of things coming at us all the time. And two, we never walk away from it. We take our phones with us. So one of the first things I tell people to do is start leaving your phone and turning your technology off for just a little bit of time. I know that causes people yeah. anxiety. What? I've got so many people <laughs> worried about me or, or I'm responsible for and I have to be reached every single possible moment. But there's a price to pay for being able to be reached. Yeah, that, that fear of being unplugged. Yeah. yeah, the fear of being unplugged. So practice five, 10 minutes here and there. Of being, I, I, I went to Home Depot the other day and forgot my, my cell phone at home and didn't realize it for a whole 15 minutes. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. 